Greetings and welcome to this video that is part of a series that covers uh, many topics in strength of materials and mechanics of materials. This particular video will cover uh, stress concentrations and have an example of them. Stress concentrations occur when a load is being applied on a part and in between where the load is applied and where it's held there is a change in cross-sectional area. So let's look at an example, fairly simple example. Here we have a flat plate and if this were put in tension from one red end to the other red end notice how the cross-section changes. So on one end the stress is going to be higher than the other because this side has a larger cross-sectional area than this one. So the force is distributed uh, around this one more than this. But the strange upshot of it all is that this transition right in here causes a higher stress than either of these two would have just by themselves. In fact there are many types of situations like this. Let's look at several from a textbook. So this is a, an appendix from a uh, well-respected textbook and they have a variety of these different situations. You have a plate in tension with a hole in the middle. You have a plate in bending with a hole in the middle. You have a plate with notches cut out that's in tension. A plate in bending in this direction with notches. A plate in tension with what we call a stepped shoulder. This is the situation that we have in uh, my example. This one is a similar thing with bending moment instead. Here we have a round bar in tension where we have a step as well or a shoulder. Same thing here but this one is in torsion. Same geometry here but this is in bending and so on. So we've already gone through nine. There are more. Uh, there are a number of them in the back of your textbook, I'm assuming. There may be some similarities and differences, mostly with what they call what, you know, uh, one textbook I use, instead of using D, they use H for the plates. So we don't have D here, we've got H. So let's get back to that particular example. Here we are. It can sometimes help to visualize what's going on by drawing some lines. Now, from this side, we've got, say, we applied a load like this. And that load has to be completely balanced from this end. So we're, I'm going to draw the same number of lines. I believe we've got seven here. And those lines all have to be taken up by the material here. So if this was a straight material without any of these steps in it, you know, the first line would go all the way back here and, and, and continue on and not have any problems. And each one would be consistently the same thing. But instead, this one has to bank kind of around here so it can get to where it's going. And this one runs in the same problem. And this one may be less so. And this one goes straight across. Okay, so what you end up with are, again, 
This is why they call them stress concentrations, because in this region, you have these lines of force, if you will, kind of uh, cramming together so that the forces can be distributed out to this other end where they're opposed and it stays in static equilibrium. Also notice that up here in the corners, there's n there are no um, red lines. So the stresses in these areas you'd expect to be particularly low. And in these areas, not too far away, particularly high. All right then, I've uh, decided we're gonna apply a force of 15 kilonewtons which is 15,000 newtons and we have a big D your book might say large H of 50 millimeters a small d or it might be a small H for you of 35 millimeters and a radius of the fillets of 7.5 millimeters and uh, let's go back and look at that chart again and we'll figure out what uh, ratios we need to calculate all right so here we are at the chart again and we need d over d and r over d so if we go with d over d that's 50 millimeters divided by 35 millimeters and that calculates out to 1.43 notice how the millimeters cancel out and so this is unitless so r over d is 7.5 millimeters all divided by 35 millimeters and that calculates out to 0 0.21 okay so now I've got my ratios all right so first thing I wanted to do is make sure I got down all the important information then the second thing I did is I calculated my ratios and then I'm going to go to my chart and I've got R over D of about 0.21 so that's somewhere right in here so I'll try to draw that down this way okay again these charts are fairly approximate so we're just trying to get a good idea of where we're at and then I have big D over little d of 1.43 now this is 1.1 this is 1.5 so somewhere in the middle would be 1.3 so then we're about you know 75 percent of the way from here to here is uh, 1.43 so it's probably something like this so it's going to be another one of these curves but something like that so next i take where they intersect here and i follow that all the way over here and this is 1.4 this is 1.6 it's a little bit above that so I'm just going to call this for argument's sake 1.65 if you read it as 1.7 or that's what it looks like on your chart or 1.6 that's fine that's uh, uh, not the point of the lesson to get it perfectly accurate the point is to get a good idea how much the step of these fillets is causing an increase in stress. So that is our KT, our stress concentration factor. All right, let's get back over to our problem. All right, now we've got KT of 1.65. Everything else kind of falls from there. Now, if we were just in the smaller section of our part, we would calculate the nominal stress of force over area. And that would be 
15,000 newtons over 35 millimeters times the thickness, which I did not write down, which is 15 millimeters. And that calculates out to 28.6 newtons per square millimeter. And a newton per square millimeter, as I showed in a previous video, is simply a megapascal. Okay, so that's our nominal stress in the bulk of the smaller section. Well, to find our maximum stress, you simply multiply it by kT. one point six five times twenty eight point six megapascals and that is forty seven point one megapascals and that's the answer that we're looking for now it does help to know what uh, well whether this is going to work or not so I chose a material of PMMA or polymethyl methacrylate. And here are some typical properties of it. And the tensile strength, so this is the ultimate tensile strength, would be 70 megapascals. If we compare that to the stress concentration value, it is not even twice the stress concentration value. So usually we want to have at least a factor of safety of two, and we don't have that. If you double this, you're talking 94 megapascals, which is clearly over the ultimate tensile strength. Now, the 70 megapascals is uh, kind of a rough, because some, uh, some say 60, some say 80. This is somewhere in the middle. Um, but still, this is definitely very high for this material, especially considering it's fairly brittle and is even more susceptible to uh, stress concentrations. Ductile materials can uh, bend and stretch and sometimes relieve some of these high stresses. Brittle materials are more susceptible and it should, care should be taken that you do not develop stress concentrations when designing with brittle materials. Let's see what our CAD program can do though. I programmed these factors in and as you can see we're holding this end stationary and we're putting a load on this end and going to run the study. Always takes a few seconds but it's pretty fast compared to the way it used to be and that's what we expect to have happen. And then we see the von Mises stress. Now the von Mises stress isn't exactly the stress that we were talking about, but um, it's gonna be similar. It's got some added calculations to it, but uh, uh, what's really interesting is we calculated 47.1 megapascals as the maximum, and here the von Mises stress is 48 megapascals. Uh, if it's plus 006, that would be a mega. That's six additional zeros. So we've got 007. So this is 48.4 megapascals. So the theory and the uh, analysis here uh, are very close together. So uh, this really worked out. So for this particular video, we started with a part that was in tensile stress but it had a changing cross-section. These steps, these fillets, have a tendency to increase the stress nearby. And that can be calculated using these types of diagrams to help uh, estimate the additional stresses. And they can be quite significant. So as we identified, as we went through this calculation, first we got our data, we calculated our ratios, we looked on those charts and found our KT, 
We calculated our nominal stress, then we multiplied it by our KT to find our maximum stress value at our stress concentration. And we determined that it was uh, probably not a good design because it's coming too close to the ultimate tensile strength. Now, if we had just stuck with our nominal at 28.6, which is less than half of this, maybe it would be not as much of a concern, but that stress concentration clearly brings it over that factor of two and makes it much more cause for concern. I hope this video helped you learn more about stress concentrations and how to calculate them and uh, what their implications are. Please keep tuned for other videos to help you learn strength of materials and mechanics of materials.